The D&D minifigures are just perfect for customizing and making your own characters. So today I'm going to show you some of the really cool customization ideas that I came up with. We have a ton of figs to look at today, so let's just get right into it. Starting up first, we've got this custom Viking Lord. He's using the dwarf's torso, and I've also made him a new double-bladed axe with the piece from the new dwarf as well. I've also made a version with a yellow face, if you prefer that style. And with the yellow head, we can actually pop on these legs that just match the torso so well. If you've got these tattered barbarian legs from series 25, then you really need to try out this combination. It's basically a perfect combination of parts. Like if you told me that these two originally came from the same figure, I'd probably believe you. Next up, we've got a Raven Knight crossbowman. My old Raven Knights used this combination of parts, but with the new Witch CMF, we can give them a big upgrade. With the legs and arms from the Witch, the crossbowman looks so much better, even though it's honestly a really small change overall. The legs, again, almost look like they were made for this torso, and the arms just match really well with all of these straps on the torso. I love this combination so much that I think I'm going to be trying to get a few more of the Witches so that I can upgrade all of my Raven crossbowmen. Anyways, next we've got a blue dragon knight. All I've done here is I've taken the armor piece off of the dragonborn, and I've given him a blue cape, along with some shoulder armor and a regular minifigure head. I think a ton of people are going to be turning these figs into regular human knights, and it just totally works. You can even swap the torso around to the back print, and it still looks really, really good. I've also given this guy the hairpiece from the dwarf, but I imagine a lot of people are going to hate this hairpiece, but I personally love how it looks on a knight. I've actually been working on a full army showcase about these guys, and I'm so excited to show you that, but it's not quite ready yet. So next up, we've got a medieval sultan, who I very loosely based on the Ottoman Empire, but it's not very accurate. He's got the tiefling's torso and the tax collector's legs from the medieval town square. This naturally is just a great combination of parts because of the purple and gold colors. And the sand blue legs are a really nice color break from the original figure in my opinion. And then for an accessory, I've just given him the book from Tasha the Witch Queen. I love how this one turned out, and I think a lot of people are going to be using this torso and leg combo for a ton of different custom figs in the future. Next up, let's take a look at this group of forest elves that I made. The one that's using the druid's torso, I've also given a pair of dual molded olive green and brown legs that just matches the torso perfectly. He's also got a forestman's shield, and that of course matches so well with the new hood piece. And then the other one has got a dark green torso from an older CMF, with some metallic parts added to it to make him look a little bit more armored than the others. And finally, the last guy with the brown hood is an elven scout that uses the back print from the druid torso, and in my opinion, it looks fantastic. Sometimes when you're using back prints, it can be kind of obvious what you're doing, but at least with this one, it looks like a regular front torso print. Seriously, you've got to try swapping the torso around on this one. I think it makes for a great scout or even some kind of hunter character. It's got me wanting to make a little army of these forest elves. They just have such a fun look to them. Anyways, next up we've got a Black Falcon Ranger that uses very few of the new parts, but is still a massive upgrade to this figure. I've taken the old Falconer CMF body and legs, and I've given them the new arms from Tasha the Witch Queen. These arms are just so versatile, and I think it makes almost any medieval military character look leagues better. And then for some accessories, he's got a messenger bag and a new bow from the CMF. This guy looks really sweet, and I wish I had some more of these dark tan bows. They're just such a nice upgrade from the classic bow piece. I think it'll be fun to make like a battle pack of these guys, like three rangers and then one knight. I think I might have a custom video idea in the future. Next up, let's take a look at this evil elf wizard that I've made with my two least favorite figs from the CMF. I've taken Strahd's torso and Taz's dress piece to make this guy. The combination of parts works pretty well, and I've also given him the Gith Yankee hair piece, but in this case I'm using it for an elf, which just works great because of the yellow ears. And then finally, he's got a staff that I've made with the new trans red skeleton head. Overall, I think this guy turned out looking pretty nice, and the dual-sided cape definitely sells that evil wizard vibe that I was going for. Now, next up, I wanted to make a character using the dragonborn head, because I have a ton of extras of these now, and I wanted to get some use out of them. So, I came up with this guy. He's got the Dragon Master torso with some white arms and these legs from the Lion Queen minifigure. He's basically like a dragonborn royal king, so I've also given him this scepter to match. I am really happy with how he looks, and it was nice to finally use this torso in a custom fig. And next up, we have an elf assassin. 
I really wanted to make some kind of roguish character in this video, and for some reason, an elf assassin just felt right to me. So they've got the elf hairpiece combined with a black mask to cover their face. And then for the body and legs, I've combined the witch torso with Strahd's arms and the legs from the Vampire Knight CMF. This strange combo works super well together, and the arm printing from Strad just helps give a bit more flavor to this otherwise simple gray and black look. Which is the exact same reason why I went with the dark red cape. It's just a slight pop of color to liven up all the grays of this fig. And obviously, since they're an assassin, they had to have the new knife piece. Next up, I've made a warlock, wizard, magic user, whatever you want to call them. He's got the legs from the new tiefling and the torso from the tax collector minifigure. Again, these two parts were just made for each other it feels like, and this guy is easily one of my favorite figs that I made today. For some accessories, he's got the new eyeball staff and a bit of warlock magic, both from the new CMF. And of course, he's gotta have that classic wizard hat and cape combo. Seriously, you really need to combine the tieflings parts with the tax collector if you have both of them. They're just such a perfect combination of parts, honestly probably the best that I've found today. And since we're on the topic of wizards for a moment, let's take a look at these two guys. The green wizard here has got the torso from the bird and some plain old brown legs. To go along with that, he's got a dark green wizard's hat with gray hair and the druid staff from the new CMF. I wanted to have a couple of figs in this video that were really easy to replicate, and that's what these two guys are. The hat and hair piece from the green wizard's a little harder to come by, but you could use whatever hat you have on hand. As for the witch, she's using all parts from the new CMF, so you can really easily make it. The only other part not from the CMF is her wand from Harry Potter, but you could find that for really cheap. I had to add it here because it just matched her winking face print so perfectly. But yeah, if you're trying to make a very classic feeling witch, I would highly recommend you get Tasha the Witch Queen's hat, and then just combine it with the Githyanki's body and legs. It is a really perfect matchup. The orange hair, the blue clothes, it looks fantastic. Now I feel like we've seen enough wizards for the time being, so let's take a look at this group of knights that I made. First up is the Elf Paladin. This is another minifigure that is just super easy to replicate if you have one of every fig from the new CMF. All you have to do is take the Dragonborn's head off and place the elves down with a big bushy white beard. I think he works great as a paladin, and I've also made him a custom hammer with parts from the Dragonborn CMF. The only other piece that you need from this that isn't in the CMF is the double-sided lightsaber hilt, but that's fairly common. This guy is just really cool looking, and the hammer design is definitely simple, but it's nice to add some more variation to your weaponry. Our next knight is more of a bandit knight, but that's a character style that I am a huge fan of. My inspiration for this figure was that I really wanted to try to use the arms from the new Mind Flayer. It kind of looks like silver shoulder armor, but it does have some pink accents to it. But to be honest with you, it's hardly noticeable on this knight, at least to me. It does the job, and it adds a bit more detail to your unarmored knights. Now unfortunately, this guy is made with some pretty unobtainable and expensive parts, so I don't recommend you try to replicate this one. Thankfully, this next one is much easier to do yourself. Again, we're just using the same Dragonborn fig as the base, and then we're going to be adding this printed lion armor from Castle 2013. This armor piece is fairly affordable on Bricklink, and it makes for a very cool looking custom lion knight. And so does the Lion Queen's shield and cape that can both be bought from Pick a Brick. This guy just has a very classic fantasy knight vibe that I think everyone has a little bit of nostalgia for in one way or another. But now we're done with the knights, so let's take a look at our last couple of customs. First up is the Dragon Tamer. I've given her the new Bard torso and some white and brown dual molded legs as the base. And then of course I had to give her the baby dragon and a whip. Finally, I thought it would make sense for her to have a scarred face print from her line of work obviously, so both the yellow and skin tone versions have a scar. I really love how this character ended up looking, and it's definitely one of the more unique ideas I had today. Now next up, for our more nefarious vibe, we've got this Lord of Darkness character. I don't exactly know what this guy's meant to be, but I just wanted to go for some kind of nondescript, all black, edgy character. So he's got the mouth of Sauron's torso and the dress from the Mind Flayer, along with a face from Taz. It just feels like a- I don't know, he just feels like a classic villain that LEGO would put into their original themes. It's very nostalgic to me. And then our last figure of the video is this tiefling adventurer who's got the bard CMF from a couple of years ago as the base and a scabbard for her sword. This is a very basic combination of parts no doubt, but one that I think looks really great together. And that's all the figures. I hope you enjoyed seeing some of my ideas for customizing the new CMF, and if you have any ideas that I missed here, please leave a comment below letting me know. 
And if you want to see my brand new Dragon Knight army when it's finally ready to be uploaded, make sure you're subscribed. And as always, thank you so much for watching.